Well, howdy folks. Uh, my, uh, apparently my wife said I should only, I should cut back. I should only have one cup of coffee per day. I don't see any problem with that. Hey, we're back and we're talking about 3D printing, but we're talking about filaments today. And it, it, there's a lot of topics out there with filaments and a lot of just talk about different brand names and whatever. But uh, what I wanted to approach today, I always like to go back to basic, you know, the very beginning, the early days of I got my 3D printer. Now, what do I buy for, you know, filament to run through it? And that's where uh, some of the other channels seem to just blow you away. You know, they, they just take off and start rattling about ABS or something. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't want anything exotic in here. I just want something I can put on the machine and reliably probably get my first model or my first few models out of there without any trouble, you know. So what I wanted to do today was uh, show you some things. And when I first started, uh, one of the recommended brands at that time, this is more than 10 years ago, was Hatchbox. That was one that we all went to at the time. That was a kind of a hot name for, you know, good PLA or something. But uh, PLA has now taken on a whole new gamut. Now, that is the most, uh, in some ways, it's the most basic filament you can buy for a 3D printer for an FDM is this thing called PLA, you know. And PLA now has gotten into a situation where there's like 18 and 22 different variations of types of PLA, depending on how much rigidity, how much rigid, how much strength you need in the model, that kind of thing. Really, for your first models for the first little while you should probably start with something that's easy and I'm going to provide a link in the description below where you can find this one this one here is not a top brand name to me but it's consistently been very very good I haven't got any complaints about it but I stumbled in one day and found some stuff on sale and it was like it was called easy PLA which you know if you want to first and you're just first starting up with your 3d printer and you want something easy this might be the one for you because you can probably be a little off on your settings and this thing will probably forgive you and keep right on sticking to the bed and building up a nice model without too much trouble because it's easy PLA. If you can't get this stuff to work for you, you might want to take up lasers or some other uh, welding or some other, you know, trade. <laughs> because here it is here. This is a brand new spool of it right here from Overture, uh, Easy PLA. Overture has some different grades, like this one right here is Overture PLA, but it's not the Easy PLA, but it, it prints fine. But for starting out, I'm going to say that Easy PLA would be a really good place to start with Overture. And of course, pick up color, whatever it is you like. Generally, uh, I have, I think, seven or eight different colors of this in stock all the time because I run different things. But uh, this one here is... Um, it just seems like it, it sticks better and it runs easier through the machine than most uh, other PLAs. It's just, I haven't had any complaints at all. In fact, I've been really surprised at how nice the modeling looks afterwards. I don't seem to have a lot of layer lines in it, that kind of thing, without using any fancy you know footwork in my software to do ironing or something like that for a finish. I seem to get a really nice model. So, easy PLA from Overton. You know, and I'll set off, provide a link in the description below where you can find that at uh, Amazon. So the next big question might be, okay, I'm a beginner, I'm just starting out, I'm gonna get me some PLA, you know, what can I run? But uh, there is some downsides even to PLA, as wonderful and easy as it is. Uh, it doesn't like to be outside, does not want to be in the sun at all. It sort of likes that ambient, nice, you know, comfortable temperature inside the house kind of thing for most modeling. So, or maybe the workshop. If you're in the workshop, you're probably okay with the, using PLA. But you sort of have to be aware of uh, heat and sunlight, you know, uh, humidity, that kind of thing. PLA is not good for those sort of areas. And that's where the modeling has to stop and you have to look into more exotic uh, materials where you're going to be heading towards uh, PETG, you know, that kind of thing, or even bigger, better than that would be the ABS, you know, that sort of thing. But what I really wanted to stick with today <laughs> yeah, was well, just PLA because it's, it's the basic thing. It's where we should start when we're... You know, first modeling with our 3D printer, we've got a new FDM printer in, we're going to run something, and you, you're going to want to buy a roll of this. Now, oh, one other thing, <laughs> it's been said many times, I will say it again, that little roll of sample uh, filament that a lot of these companies send with these machines when you first buy them, 
just set it aside somewhere. I don't know what to do with it. I, I've actually, a couple times, just for experiment, I've tried running that stuff. That stuff, they usually they send you for some reason, it's junk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it doesn't seem to like the machine. I don't know why they do that. You know, it's like, it's all usually white. It's always, seems like it's a little roll of, you know, white filament. And it's like, it always gets jammed in the machine or, or you know, won't stick to the bed, you name it. You know, it's like, you're trying to sell a machine, I would at least include a sample of something that's going to run like, like this, where it's easy PLA that's going to just work fine for you. But uh, I think because the machines are in storage, they're in warehouses, whatever, the humidity gets in there. So you've probably got a, a pretty bad uh, hunk of sample of PLA that you probably should not be running. The other thing that I do, and this is again getting more advanced I guess with PLA, is I have dryers. And I use the dryers very adamantly because I have, I'm in Texas and the humidity here is terrible. So I use a dryer to bring the humidity down so that when I do run this, hopefully the humidity, uh, relative humidity is about 15% on my spools as I run them into the machine. And uh, when I'm finished, I take them back out of there and put them back in a dryer box with some uh, little, the little silken, you know, packets that help absorb moisture because PLA is not very good around moisture. Now, I, I don't want to get off topic, but uh, Pet G is worse, okay? <laughs> it really likes uh, to suck up the humidity, <laughs> and it can be really problematic. Bubbling and all kinds of weirdness will show up in your models. And a lot of times when people are troubleshooting a 3D printer because it's having problems, a lot of times that's where the trouble is coming from with like PETG specifically, but also if you're having trouble with PLA sometimes even, it could be that the humidity has just gotten in there and it's it's all, all hard and brittle. It's cracking, it's, it's bubbling, you know, uh, you get a lot of stringing, that sort of thing, all kinds of strangeness. Now, um, staying with PLA, and I'll see if I can find it here. So, uh, I've got one here that I don't recommend for starting out. Uh, it's a pretty color, and once you're advanced, you know, uh, you could probably go down the road with it. It is PLA, but it, it's it's a little rough on my machines, and I've had some problems with it, and that's, uh, it's called Cosmic Silk. It's some of these fancy, silky-looking, uh, extra shiny, have different colors and stuff in the PLA, in the spool, you know, and those are really cool. They Beautiful stuff comes out of them, but uh, I have had, you know, nozzle clogs and issues with that PLA. So be prepared, you know, that uh, once you've gotten good and your machine seems to be doing great and with something like this and you decide to move into that, I'm just saying be ready. You know, you may have some problems. In fact, comment in the description below if you've had problems with like the cosmic silk colors and the, the fancy, you know, glow in the dark or whatever, uh, PLAs, that sort of thing because there is some problems. Now, I'm gonna stop here and take a look at the PLAs at uh, Polymaker and just show you the selection. And I don't want you to get, you know, mind blown about it, but there is a lot of different PLA out there. So we'll just take a quick look. That's some different flavors of PLA, but that's just a little bit. There is a lot of different, uh, you know, grades of PLA out there. The basic ones, such as this one here, uh, this is a one kilogram spool or 2.2 pounds. This is pretty much your typical spool that most of us will buy for our, you know, consumer grade uh, 3D printers. And the size of these uh, are always going to be 1.75 millimeters. Yeah, metric, welcome to metric, but uh, that's the size of the filament itself. And that's the size you're gonna be looking for. If you're not sure what you're doing and you're on a website and you wanna order something, look for that 1.75 millimeter and uh, probably get yourself a one kilogram spool. Obviously, these are going to run anywhere from around 15 to 60 even more uh, dollars and what you spend on filament is up to you uh, personally i try to keep it around 20 25 dollars a spool for good quality but when i see a sale on uh such as one of these was on sale uh at amazon oh just weeks ago and it was like 14 dollars a spool so i ordered several spools because you know that's a good price so i, I took advantage of it uh, you can buy a larger bulk orders but again you have to really watch those bulk orders out there uh, unfortunately there's some uh, what would you call it tricksters out there where you'll get 0.25 of a kilogram or something per and you think you're getting a great deal and you're getting one of these for a great price per spool in a large order 
and that's not what you're getting. Yeah, I, I see that a lot, and it's like you just sort of have to keep an eye out for it. So it's kind of a, uh, yeah, you know, consumer beware. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now for the controversial topic. <laughs> yeah, this is just plain old PLA. Now, if you have a bed slinger, you'll know that that's a high-speed printer. If you have a Core XYZ, one of the new ones that's a hyperspeed printer, really fast, like Bamboo Lab, they, a lot of them will tell you to, to get hyperspeed or HS, whatever, which stands, you know, for really fast, you know, filament. I have tried this filament, like the Easy PLA. I have tried it in both uh, my bed slingers and I've tried it in my, my little, you know, Core XYZ machines that are hyperspeed and I'll tell you right now, I don't see any difference. I see nothing different at all. Uh, everything seems to work just fine. No, no weird nozzle jams or any difference in the printing, uh, the quality. Everything's good. So I, you know, I keep. I've asked at one time for comments about that. I, I really, I don't know if there's any difference in the blend of how they make the PLA for the hyperspeed cube type printers or whatever, as opposed to the common ones. The only thing that I do notice with the hyper machines is a lot of times the temperature will be about 20 degrees Celsius more uh, than than what we would commonly use on a bed slinger and sometimes I think that temperature sort of helps that flow to go through plus uh, a good design of high flow nozzle and extruder so that things are going through pretty quickly but I haven't seen any difference now uh, I don't know if it'll be late this week or next week uh, I want to take something uh, some new software for design that we use for drawing stuff up but what I want to do is we'll we'll do a show where we start from the very basics of drawing something basic with their software and we'll go through all the stages to actually 3d printing it and then taking a look and see how good a model we received from this uh, software package that I'm looking at right now I had talked about it doing it forever but I think uh, as early as this week maybe Thursday or next week we've got to do this uh, I just you know, I have got to find out for myself. I'm just not hearing enough in the uh, community out there about 3D printing as to whether this software will do the job or not. And so I've become rather determined to, let's just buy the software, get the licensing, design something basic that has some features in it, print it, and then take a look at the quality and say, is this good enough for modeling or is it not? You know, and I think it is, but the proof is in the pudding, and the only way we're going to be able to do that is start from scratch, run it through, and see what comes out the other end. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this was uh, this was crazy, but I uh, had a lot of uh, interesting uh, newbies that are getting 3D printers, and they have a lot of questions about you know we don't understand you know what you know this part of the deal. So that's kind of like what I dedicated the show today. Probably not going to you know hit a million viewers or anything, but. We will at least we sort of covered that for the newbies so they know you know this is what to look for you know so uh, last last thing too I guess uh, PLA is for like in the home inside the home kind of thing it's not an outdoorsy you know uh, kind of plastic whatever uh, finish so when you're modeling keep that in mind that you know if you're going to be going outside with the model and it's going to be staying outside or something you're going to need to look at some of the other plastics we were talking. A little bit about uh, PLA that's just strictly uh, it should be in air conditioned or comfortable conditions all the time and uh, also yeah don't leave it in the Sun Pooh, I, I left a black piece in the Sun by the door here the one day <laughs> for a couple days matter of fact and uh, yeah it turned into a pretzel <laughs> so that was my mistake it was like you know I know better than do that but I did yeah and uh, it was bad yeah it was worse than I would have expected but it was like wow okay <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here thank you for watching coffee and tools please like share subscribe ring the notice bell I'm out of here over and out <laughs>